the bankrupt bookseller. Books no re decent bookseller would keep. My pencil almost quivers in my hand. Certainly I am shaken. I am as Luther at Wittenberg or Latimer at Smithfield. I have made a declaration. I have made a gesture, a gesture with a sacrifice. Last week I bought at the sale room some parcels of books. They don't cost they didn't cost much, but I like these purchases. They are as thrilling as the lucky bags of my childhood and contain even more exciting, exciting treasures. An earlier purchase at the same sale, 12 books for four shillings, including included The Forgotten Success, The Sky Pilot by Ralph Connor. Four volumes of these exciting romances, Wilson's Tales of the Borders and of Scotland, and a second edition only, alas, of these twain. I had four shillings worth of pleasure out of the parcel, and I count on selling the dozen books for not less than twelve shillings. There are one or two which will go for two tuppence, or even, if I, I fear, will only fetch a penny. Who will buy, for example, The Dignity of Business by H.E. Morgan nowadays? The proud inventor of the phrase, business as usual, is not a bestseller as far as literature is concerned, but I may be unduly pessimistic. He certainly was not. Well meant, no doubt, these three words express too readily the businessman's outlook on the war and perhaps made for as good uh, a, a good deal of any uh, of our troubles then and since. My hand is steadier. I will record what I found and what I did. In a parcel of books, I found two volumes of what a young man should know series. <coughs> I burned them with difficulty in, my, in the old fireplace in the basement. They stank, actually, and me metaphorically. They should not have been written. They should not have been printed. They should not have been published. If, however, writer, printer, and publisher have failed, I, a decent bookseller, have not failed. I have withdrawn these copies from circulation, and I am proud of it. This is no heat about nothing, no storm in a teacup. The books are well meant, I will agree, if you like, but they are wrong. Not that they contain anything bawdy or filthy, they are just wrong. The impudence of the title offends me. What a young man ought to know, indeed. There is nothing a young man ought to know. In the beginning God said, Let there be light, and there was light. He didn't go about striking matches or lighting candles. There was light for uh, those who had eyes. The miracle and the loveliness and beauty of life is that it is not fe no fenced in pr uh, preserved. All may eat of the tree of good and evil, and all may learn by what they experience. The world will not be parceled up into what is good for young men of 25 and what is good for greybeards of 80. There is light. He that hath eyes to see and ears to hear, let him, nay, he must, use them in fear, in peril, in danger, but he must use them or perish. I will not distribute such literature. And I swear, as a decent bookseller, I will burn all unsuitable books which my misadventure by misadventure I buy. This is the self-denying ordinance of a decent bookseller. Months ago I wrote these lines, and I am a different man today. Not that I go back on my self-denying uh, ordinance. I adhere to it, for I have just burned Maria Monk a violent anti-Catholic book in paper covers and before the war anyway of large circulation. The book is in bad taste and I would not pass it on. I don't mind, I find on examination of my outlook books which ought to be called obscene or body. I am fond of quite a few of, as a matter of fact, but they have a largeness which makes them lovable. Jürgen, for example, I have heard condemned. It is a delightful book to me, and uh, it is 
it has many passages which I have uh, marked foolishly perhaps in the volume still on my shelves. I believe I marked it to make it unsaleable for which sin may heaven and my creditors forgive me. How hot I became on these subjects and how unnecessary it all is. From one point of view, I ought to keep anything the public want. I am a bookseller, not a censor, but I remember that before I was a bookseller, a woman who was my mother conceived and bore me a man-child. I am not abating my birthright. This self-examination as to the books no decent bookseller shall keep will not let me rest, and I return to it. I loathe these books which are sold to silly women and other businessmen by installments. I daren't write the titles, but they are sold by companies who with high flutin names uh, through salesmen and saleswomen who call from door to door and from shop to shop. The manner of selling shows the manner of the book they sell. They have half a cover and a few pages pasted in. They have a long story and the subjects of these skeleton books are usually of a very comprehensive character. You can, if their tale is to be believed, buy a book all about the home or the dog. You can buy a book about the universe or the imperial inheritance, and you can do this by paying two shillings in cash or something like that, and an infinite series of payments thereafter. A shopman the other day asked me to buy his twelve volumes and was aghast when I refused to give him even a shilling a volume. But I must be fair. The manufacturers, they are manufacturers rather than booksellers, know that no decent bookseller would have their books. They know that too well, and that is why they advise for ladies and gentlemen of good address to introduce important works to their friends in exchange for generous remuneration. The booksellers are not that sort of ladies and gentlemen, though heaven knows I may come to that yet. I will do it if fate uh, faces me, but not today. And it quotes two lines of poetry. Or the past, not even the gods have power. Tomorrow, do thy worst, for I have had my hour. I walk up and down my shop, Nilsson on his quarter deck. Was uh, was not a prouder man than I.